Good to be back in person after we did a Zoom last month. And I do apologize for not wearing a usual suit, but when I got up this morning and saw the heat advisory, I said, you guys have to stick through Polo Patrick. So you got this today. All right, first I wanna thank our sponsors as always. We've got Illinois State University, Central Illinois Regional Airport, WGLT, Serban, Cumulus Radio, uh, The Bull, Cities 92.9 and Magic 99.5. And also a special shout out to Heartland Community College for this great facility. It's one of the favorite ones that we have while we do these things in person. Um, for those who don't know me, my name is Patrick Coven. I am the CEO of your Bloomington Normal Economic Development Council. I graduated from Millican University, ended up getting a economic development finance professional designation from the National Development Council, uh, became a certified economic developer through the International Economic Development Council after attending the University of Oklahoma's Economic Development Institute, and most recently graduated from the University of Notre Dame with a master's in business analytics. Go Irish. So for this one, uh, there's always a theme to these, and I thought that based off the numbers you guys are going to see, it's been actually really steady. I'm not going to say that it's slowing down like uh, some of the other areas of our the economy, but we do have steady growth, and in economic development, I would much rather see steady incremental growth instead of some of the massive ramp-ups that we've seen in the past. So same formula as always, we always go through the same process, talk about the impact, go over some numbers, um, how the EDC and our partners reacted during that time, and then how, what we're gonna end up doing next. So slow and steady wins the race. I almost put a turtle on here, but I thought everyone would consider that being slowing down. So this is incremental growth. So first with the numbers, we're gonna go over our employment trends. Uh, the two different areas we look at are the LAUS and then the CES. First is the, um, we have to know that we're gonna be looking at the overall MSA. And I always have to point this out because anytime you see a study that says Bloomington, Illinois, this is what they're talking about. This is our census MSA, Metropolitan Statistical Area, which does include DeWitt County. So all these numbers are for both of these. Um, the circle and the arrows coming in and out, that is our inflow and outflow. This is really good information when we're trying to figure out what our labor shed is. Uh, so this basically says that there are 33,000 people that drive into our MSA every single day to work. Um, the circle, those are people that live and work in the MSA, and then the arrow going out are people that live in our MSA but might work in Champaign or Peoria or somewhere else. And that's very important because not all of our numbers are measured the same. So the first one that we look at is the local area unemployment statistics. This number are the people that either live and work in Bloomington Normals MSA or um, work somewhere else. So this is our workforce within the MSA. And we like to see the unemployed going down and the unemployment count is going down. It is less than last year, not by a lot. Um, this is good to know, basically saying that if you wanna have a job, you can find the job. The downside or the flip side of this is when we're looking or talking to site selectors and they're looking for available workforce, we don't really have a lot of available workforce. So it's good for our local economy, very hard to attract new businesses in with low unemployment. Um, the next one is the employment. So you want to see that employment going up. This one um, has jumped up a little bit, not as much as I was hoping for. I still don't believe manufacturing is counted into this data set. We will look at another data set that shows that really jumping up. Um, but for our employment, it is continuing to rise. So that steady incremental growth, like I mentioned. Combine those together and that gives you, gives you our overall labor force. So we are up labor force. That's the um, unemployed with the employed. And then the number that the press likes to cover is the unemployment rate. So that is just a percentage, but you take those two together and then you divide unemployed by the labor force to get this rate. And we are continuing to stay at the bottom. So you can see that bottom blue line, we're always one of the lowest in the state, which is very, it's nice to be able to say that, basically saying that if you want a job, you can get a job. Now, the next one, we put more stock in the current employment statistics because these are the amount of people that are employed within our MSA, regardless of where they work. So these are the jobs of our companies. So it doesn't matter if they are living and working here or if they're living somewhere else and coming in. So these jobs also continue to rise. So we like to see this. Uh, this is a not seasonally adjusted. Uh, we, we added this because in, in the past, we, we noticed a big dip right after the pandemic between us and Champaign. And we realized with all the college students leaving, that's why that dip had happened. Um, so we are above where we were at before. So there are more people working in Bloomington Normal. And when it comes to the seasonally adjusted, where it flattens it out, we're also above where we're at last year. So again, we're, we're heading in the right direction. Everything's looking really good. Um, the one that's catching everyone's attention right now and what's triggering a lot of people to come check us out are our quarterly census of employment wages. And this is broken down by industry. 
So this just now hit um, at the beginning of 2022. So it takes a while for this to catch up. But you can see manufacturing in 2021 was only around 3,000 employees in our area. We know that wasn't true because at that time, Rivian had over 4,000 themselves. So that massive jump you're seeing is going to be Rivian. That'll continue in this year, um, especially once uh, Ferrero gets online and adds there another 200 to 250 jobs. Uh, so that these are the jobs that are in our area. And because of that massive growth is why we're seeing so many residential developers just ping us and say, hey, we've, we've been triggered by this. What's going on here? And it's because these numbers just now are catching up. And to the retail sales trend. So the theory is if everybody's working, there's more dollars coming into the economy that it should all be going up, which it is. So on this one, we've got 2021, 2022, and 2023 in gray. And you can see that it's been a really big jumps until May of this year. There's a barely an incremental jump compared to last year. I don't know if that has something to do with the interest rates that continue to rise from the Fed, if things are starting to slow down or if we're tightening our wallets, um, but it's still going up. So I'm happy with that, but it's not going up at the same rate that it has compared to April or March. Then investment wise, we wanna see um, dollars going back in the community from our developers and our companies. And again, we've got 2021, 2022, and 2023 in gray. These are the commercial permits. Um, you can see that this year we've had a lot of activity. So there's already been 201 commercial permits in McLean County um, compared to 2021 at 286 and then 302 in 2022. We're on track to have a lot of permits, but I don't think it's going to be, we're going to hit the same amounts when it comes to the investment. Um, so last year having $377 million invested in our community, um, I don't think we're going to hit that again based off the projects that I'm aware of. Um, right now, we're at that 100 million mark. I know of a couple other projects that could finish by the end of the year, bumping that up to about 150, maybe two, but I don't see us hitting that 377 again. Either way, if you're hitting $100 million a year in investment, that's really good for an economy. And then a new one that we're tracking, uh, we've been asked about the press, is uh, going after the residential permits as well, because we know that housing is such an issue because of the workforce. We've got this divvied up into two. So the single family is the blue at the bottom, and then the multifamily is the orange at the top. So combined right now, we've had 77 permits issued for residential units. As you recall, the housing study says we need close to 4,000 units. So 77 is putting a little bit of a dent, but we could use a lot more. There's been a lot of projects that have been approved through plan commissions um, to add that, but having 77 right now, um, hopefully we're heading in the right direction. And then the total amount as well. So right now we're looking at close to $25 million invested in residential. We'll continue to track this going forward as more units come online. Um, talking to the Fairlawn group, I know as soon as they build those, they go immediately. So the demand is there. I think one of the challenges that we're seeing talking to developers and some of our uh, financial friends is that those rates continue to rise. So whenever they had plans, they built that model to build a, pro a big project. Since they started, the rates continue to go up. So the model's getting a little tight. Um, so we might have to rework some of those. So how are we reacting to this? Uh, we all do it. We do everything off of our economic flywheel. This is a standard practice for IEDC, where if we have good resources in the community, our businesses will develop. When our businesses develop, they invest back in the community, which in turn we can put, put, put back into our resources. Um, we always like to start off with infrastructure because that's a main thing, focus of ours. After that, eliminating blight. We don't really focus on that. Um, or neighborhood beautification, but workforce is a key for us right now. And with that, we do have three uh, committees. And right now there's a lot of committee members that are in here, but if you are an investor in the EDC and you wanna join one of these committees, let us know. Um, we've got a real estate and development committee, which really focuses on our one voice projects and what areas need infrastructure or are possible to develop. Um, the business and entrepreneurship one is one that's uh, really getting going now. We're hopefully gonna have a big assessment coming out pretty soon. And then workforce as always is on everyone's mind. So trying to figure out that K through 12, all the way through upskilling, the retention and the attraction side. So for us, we have a 15 point strategic plan that's public. Our uh, private one actually has 20 items that are on here. And today we'll go through where we're at with a lot of these. And the first one everybody likes to see is the project management side. Um, the projects are still coming in. And as you'll notice that they're all manufacturing, almost everything across the board, more manufacturers want to be here. Uh, the challenge continues to be the workforce. And compared to last year at this time, we're at 40 projects, which is not bad for two quarters, but last year we were about at 59. And I did have to call the state of Illinois and all of our regional partners because during May and June, we were averaging one to two a week 
in July, we had zero. And so I had to call Chicago and say, hey, what the heck just happened? Is it us? And they're like, no, everyone's looking at Chicago right now. And I heard the same thing from Champaign, same thing from Peoria, that they're just not getting a lot of looks from the site selectors for Central Illinois right now. Hopefully that picks back up in August. Um, project wise though, we do have some good ones going on. One of these was a pre-pandemic project. Let me see if I can find it. Number 16, Project Chego, um, which is actually named after our rural intern's dog that was her name, Chego. Um, but this is one that started pre-pandemic. So it's a European company that came over, um, really loved the area, pandemic hits, everything went silent, but now they're back. So they'll be back in town pretty soon. Um, hopefully visit some of the same sites. So the projects that we list up here are new projects. So since I've been here, we've had averaging 100 to 120 a year. Just because it's not on the list doesn't mean we're not still working the project. It takes a long time for some of these to get through. Um, our next big focus is business retention expansion. Hopefully everybody knows Carl Teichman. If you're not, he is in the back. Please schedule a meeting with Carl. Um, we've got a lot of tools right now. Um, Carl recently, he just started, but he already completed his business retention expansion course at IEDC over the last couple of days. And uh, he wanted me to remind everybody that there's some really good ARPA funds that are out there. And these are dollars that are available to help uh, develop Bloomington. If anyone doesn't know about these funds, please contact Carl so we can get you in touch with our city friends and get those dollars spent and invested back in the community. And also I asked Carl, like, what are the trends right now when you're talking to a business? What are the biggest needs? It's workforce across the board. Besides a couple of complaints here and there about state of Illinois taxes. Um, the next one, though, with uh, Casey, this is a fun one because Casey was our former business retention expansion manager, and he actually has uh, an expansion project he's been working on for at least a year, and within two weeks, that should be announced pretty soon. So just because we're not getting all these new RFPs in and new companies coming to town, um, some of our local companies are growing from within. So this is going to be one of about three. There's two that are in planning, but one should be announced in about two weeks. So that'll be a fun one to see our local companies grow. And personally, I would, I love the new companies. I like breaking out the golden shovels and making a big splash. I'd rather see our local companies grow from within, which is exactly what Ferrero has been doing, exactly what Rivian has been doing. And this new company, which I almost said right there. Um, also now we've transferred Casey over. So he is in charge of uh, developer retention and attraction. Um, so his job is to get all the RFPs, fill those out, the develop relationships with our developers, but then also do the business attraction side. And one of the things that Casey did when he came on board was just updating our lowest information system. So I know that there's a lot of sites that are out there that you know might be pocket listings, might be available, but they're not public by anybody else. If we don't have them in the system on our website, we are not in the game. There's been times that something will happen and a developer will say, why wasn't my land on there? He's like, well, if we send you the information and we don't get your land, we're not submitting it. So if you guys know anybody that has land available, please make sure it's in this system because it's not, this is directly connected to the state of Illinois system. They provide this for us. It's called Location One Information System. It is a, it's a great system that has all the available buildings and all the available sites. But if it's not in here, we're not selling it. And then on the attraction side, I am very happy to announce that uh, Mayor Coos and Mayor Boca's hard work of going up and visiting our friends from Germany multiple times has led for the Germans to bring a delegation down. So this fall, we'll be hosting a delegation of about 30 German companies all around the EV space. I believe they're gonna visit Michigan, Indiana, and us. Um, so we're last on the trip. We'll be hosting um, probably some type of reception that night. If anybody wants to be involved with that, please let me know. If you know of any other German companies in central Illinois, I know it helps out a ton to have other companies from the country welcome them um, because doing business in the United States can be a little difficult. Um, we've had friends that have come in, um, thanks to Ray, and uh, you know, learning how they do business in China compared to the United States is a little bit different. So as we were driving around, um, our friends from China had said, you know, what's it take to buy that land? And I was like, well, you call that number and you buy the land. You know, like, I don't have to get approval from the mayor. And I was like, well, no, not to buy the land. Um, like, well, how do I, you know, set up the business? And then they visited Texas and came back and they're like, we're going to need more time. We had no idea you had to go through this many agencies to get approval where over there, you get the thumbs up, you're good to go on everything. So it is a process, but uh, stay tuned for that. It should be sometime beginning of December, I believe. And then One Voice. Um, we are we're doing really well with our One Voice projects from the past couple of years, but we are in the process of accepting new One Voice projects. So any infrastructure projects, anything that we can do to take um, 30 of our local champions out to DC. This is last year's delegation. Um, anyone that's interested in joining us, please contact me and we'll get you uh, on the list. 
but we're also accepting projects right now for 2024. We usually go around the end of February, early March, um, and last couple of years projects are actually getting funded. And so this is very rare that a lot of these get through all at once. Uh, but Senator Durbin has allocated $800,000 so far for Connect Transit to bus safety improvements. Representative Sorensen has got 850 for the Town of Normal stormwater improvements. Also 850 for the Town of Normal street upgrades. And then Representative LaHood has 1.2 million for Benward pump station and force main, which might not be that attractive to everybody else. But if you do not have that infrastructure in the ground, you're not developing anything. Then also this one, I've heard have been we've taken out at least 10 times, but Hamilton Road finally getting some dollars. Hopefully that goes through about $2 million being allocated right now. Um, that'll be fantastic to see that one go, which basically means for us, we take these things till they get funded. If all these get funded, we've got a fresh start for next year. So if you know of anybody out there that needs dollars, uh, please let us know and we'll get that listed for next year. Also, I want to talk about our BN STEM program. Um, just met with, met with Rebecca yesterday, and she's in the back if anybody has any questions. Um, but uh, one of the things that she's looking to do is a new cohort that's really revolving around the cybersecurity track um, for high school students. So the theory is that they can go through year one IT fundamentals. After that, get some Google certifications. Um, year three for automation uh, with Python, which is coding, if anybody's interested. And year four would be capstone and community education and an internship. Um, we are looking to expand this because cybersecurity is very important, but there's other things in this area that we know that we need. Um, so this is one that if it goes well, we'll hopefully do more tracks, but it's really about the K through 12, uh, getting our students interested in what's really going on in their own backyard. And then next on the list is our Rural Development Fellow. This is one that we had Randall and she was an ISU fellow and she recently finished her program. So we are looking for a new one to start this fall. I believe we're working with Illinois Wesleyan right now, but if you know of anyone that'd be interested in being an intern, um, let us know. But this is really about taking the same services that we offer with Bloomington Normal and getting those out into our rural communities. And then next is our uh, life multiply. This is for workforce attraction, actually retention and attraction. And Courtney Schaefer is in the back and she's been kicking out some great videos. And I promised I would put up this QR code. And as I go through these slides, it'll stay here if anybody wants to find out how they can get involved. But really the idea of this is, is being able to show our own students and our own workers what we have that they probably don't realize. And another big part of it is cleaning up our digital footprint. Now you have to remember that this, I'm actually coming up on my four year anniversary, it's hard to believe, but before I came down to Bloomington Normal, I Googled Bloomington Normal. And right now, if you go to YouTube and Google Bloomington Normal, in the top 10, there's a video that says Bloomington, Illinois hoods. And the next one is 10 places in Illinois you should never move to. So if that is that, that is a problem. So we need your help to please clean up our digital image. Like when they get here, we've got them. I mean, that's, that's the biggest takeaway that we've had so far from the Life Multiplied branding campaign was that once people are in town, they realize there's way more here than corn. But there's actually a video on there as well, somebody just walking around the vacant mall. Like that's not a good image. That is our brand, unless they talk to one of the people in this room. So help us put out better content. Um, we're working on it. Courtney has actually done a really good job on TikTok and doing reels and things I have no idea how to do, but we're pumping out more content. We need more of your stories to share. Um, here's actually one of them. Let's see if we can get it to play. Uh, my husband and I moved here seven years ago, and uh, we we lived in Chicago, and uh, we wanted to find a community, and we found it right away. Um, everybody is so welcoming. The community is amazing, and there's a community um, that's living here. It's so easy here to get involved. Everyone's willing to lend a hand. Um, there's always something you can help with, whether it's
in the community and helping those around you. We know that you're helping make this a better place to live. Uh, we have so many nonprofits and not profits that, that need our help, frankly, and um, and being able to offer that with our time and service is really invaluable and it's really a thing that we can offer. But we all have the same goal that we need to make it. So I think there's this really a lot of spirit of giving and helpfulness that the community has. It's a great community because there are a lot of people here who are willing to step up volunteer, give back, and uh, help move our community forward. So we are looking to do more of those. I know that I believe Cheryl, you just had your shoot the other day and then Tracy should have one coming up as well. Anyone else that loves this place, please let us know. We'd love to go out and shoot you around the community, but we just want to tell the story of what makes this place so great to live. And another way that we can do this is we did purchase a magic mirror. So if you're ever in an event and you see this in the back, same thing, go up, tell your story. These are just really quick videos, maybe 10 seconds photos. We're just trying to flood the internet of everything that's so great about Bloomington Normal. And this has all been part of our branding strategy leading up through Q2. We have just entered Q3. And um, I'm going to go ahead and give a shout out to uh, Gary and uh, Scott. And one of the things that we've got going on right now is um, we're actually doing a little gladiator style advertising competition between some of our local media. So what we said is for Q3, I've got the pantograph against Central Illinois Proud with the idea that we want more people to commute into the community. And then for Q4, we've got GLT versus JBC. So we're each getting the same amount of money every single month with the idea that whatever tactics you guys wanna use, get us leads. Uh, so the first one that we're gonna do for the commuting campaign is to bring this back, which should be running pretty soon on Central Illinois Proud. So bnworks.org is a link that is live right now and will take you directly to uh, a job board that we have, which luckily we don't have to enter the data. It goes out and scrapes all of your data. Um, so yeah, bnworks is the idea that for the come home or the commuting campaign, all the ads will direct everybody there. We'll see which company gives us the most leads, but it should be a really good report at the end of the year, which the idea is hopefully by the end of the year, we have more houses, which we can bring people home to. And number nine was our real estate development summit, which actually worked out pretty well because a couple of the developers that were there have come back in town. And one of them was one that our friends at Bloomington just got approved for 800 units over on the west side of town. So it's amazing how those things are just back to back that we hosted this real estate development summit, brought down some out of town developers, and they ended up following through with the process and getting this approved. So kudos to Bloomington for getting this annex. Uh, this should be a pretty cool project, especially as the west side continues to develop. Um, 800 units is a lot. Um, not really going with my incremental growth theme right there. Uh, the next one, number 11, though, is getting an industrial park. Um, we are running out of commercial space. Our biggest space right now is still the GE building. Um, that is available. If anybody knows when it goes in there, we send that all the time for our RFPs. Um, ideally, we do have some type of industrial park. Uh, we have been working very closely with the airport, our friends over at CIRA, um, who was waiting on the state of Illinois right now on some possible infrastructure, which will change the game for that entire area. We're also aware of three other possible industrial parks as well. Um, we're hoping that one of these goes because a lot of the buildings that we're getting requested for are that 40 to 60,000 square feet with high ceilings, and we don't really have anything to support it right now. So any of our surrounding communities that any supplier might be looking to go to, if they have that vacant space, they're going to get it over us. We got plenty of great farm ground. Um, we're even running out of room that actually has the infrastructure as well, which is why we focus so much on infrastructure. But if we can get this thing lined up at the airport, um, it'll be amazing to have the air service, the road and the rail all in one spot. Next one is uh, entrepreneurship ecosystem. Uh, this is one that our uh, friends at ISU, Wesleyan are very involved with. Um, Craig's been a great help with this as well. It's just really trying to find out what everybody's doing. Um, Casey's not here right now, he had a conflict, but he wanted to let me know that we'll be hosting an entrepreneurship event. 
Uh, we're gonna try to duplicate exactly what Charlie just did with the chamber by having everyone come in and really just talk about what do we got going on? What's working, vote on some things and uh, we'll have adult beverages as well. We'll probably give the beer out first to get more conversation going. <laughs> Um, but it's be, be stay tuned to that. Anyone that's into entrepreneurship, we really want to get a lot of entrepreneurs there because right now it's a lot of uh, government officials like myself. We don't have a lot of experience with it. We need your brains. So we will we'll give you adult beverages, um, get the brains flowing, and hopefully get some good ideas as we work on next year's strategic plan, what we can put some money behind. Because right now it's just trying to find out what the heck everybody's got and what we could be when we grow up. And the next one, the entrepreneurship funds. Um, so this is one that the county actually converted over, which has been awesome. Um, all of our realtor friends in the room, there is $10,000 commercial rent assistance available. So what that means is if you have any clients, we will pay up to $10,000 for a year. And if you go onto our website now, the application's there. Before I was talking to people one-on-one -on -one because we do require a lot of information. We wanna make sure that we don't get any businesses that are scams. Um, so we're gonna need some type of assurance with that. And one of them is to meet up with our SBDC at Illinois Wesleyan and make sure that they've got a good business plan from Illinois Wesleyan. That'll you know put our minds at ease a little bit. But then the next thing that we have is a $20,000 revolving loan fund. That means if we can pay for your lease and then you need some help with some equipment to go into the space, if you get if you need $100,000 overall, a lot of time our banking friends are going to want you to bring 20% in we can cover up to $20,000 of that. So ideally, there's no money out of pocket for you to do this. Um, it is a revolving loan fund, which means that it's zero interest. So it's a good way to get some equipment into a space along with that $10,000 commercial rent and systems. If anyone has any questions, please follow up with me afterwards. Um, the next thing, we also have uh, dollars allocated for virtual tours. I think this is one that our friends at Corn Belt recently partnered with uh, Sarah on to do uh, some drone footage, we wanna get better property packages online. So any commercial properties that are out there, we can do 3D models, drone footage, whatever. There's dollars in our budget to help you promote those properties. So they stand out more online. And then the next one is our Smart Cities Initiative, which is the Bloomington Normal Innovation Alliance, who recently hosted a cybersecurity summit Hopefully anyone got a chance to see that. Those videos will be online pretty soon. Um, I think the intent was to get more small businesses in there to take cybersecurity seriously. We ended up with a lot of cybersecurity pros. So it was almost speaking to the, to the choir. They, all, they understood everything, but it'd be nice to have that online. Um, but as our Smart City Initiative keeps going, we just wanna make sure that our governments are working cooperatively along with our universities and that we're keeping our technology up to date because we all know we can move a little bit slow, much slower than you can in the private sector. Um, so it's been a good cooperation between the city, the town, the county, ISU, Wesleyan, and Hartley Community College. And last but not least is our Mid-Illinois Collaborative. This is a, uh, an organization that's not even really official, but basically everyone that's in there I've known for a long time. So we get together uh, monthly. Um, anything that comes out with the state of Illinois, we talk about quite a bit. But anytime that we go sell, you know, our communities, we have to sell the region because we're selling all the universities, we're selling all the workforce in every single one of these communities. So the idea is that we market regionally and sell locally. Um, they've been great to work with. They've all got a lot of things going on. And I like the fact that we're right in the middle so I can sell all their assets and we can keep taking their workforce from them. Which I want them to move here eventually. Okay, so what's going next? All right, the next thing that we're looking at is doing an internship board. So we had got started and we had everything divided up nice and neat by quarters, where quarter one was get the brand launched, quarter two was really focused on the students, with quarter three going on to more people commuting in, and quarter four as the uh, come home campaign. And then our board chair, Jay Phillips, said, well, let's keep working with the students. And I'm like, well, a really quick win for that would just be to get an internship board. So we want to make sure that next year we've got our advertising dollars keeping these students around because we've got a really good talent pool here. And it's, it breaks my heart whenever I hear of them getting internships up in Chicago. Like I love Chicago. I love the Bears. So you know my pain, but it's like we've got really good jobs here and we're having a hard time connecting them. So this will work exactly like our current job board where it'll scrape your listings online. So as long as you list internship in there, it should end up on this board for us. So Courtney's working on that and it should be live, I'd say within a month or two. The next one, the familiarization tours. If you see myself, if you see Neil Finland, if you see anyone from the city or the town that's out and about with some people that you don't recognize, come over and say hi and be friendly um, because we've got a lot of out of town developers or businesses in town quite a bit. Um, there's some coming in next week. 
we need to make sure that we're putting on a good face. A lot of times, like the numbers will go so far, but this community is what sells it once they're here. Um, so if you see us out and about, uh, we've had a lot of good visits so far, especially some follow-ups from that uh, real estate development summit. Um, but yeah, if you guys want to get involved, let me know. I don't, I'm not saying I want to stage the whole thing, but I mean, it'd be nice if you see us come say hi, help us sell the place. And then last but not least, the big one that we're going for that I want to let you guys aware of in case you hear anyone with the title convergent contact you, we are getting ready to do an investor drive. So we've been asked to do a lot of things in this community on top of what we do. Uh, I've been told that's the curse of being good. So they want us to do more. So what we're going to do is try to find out what else we should be doing, whether that's in entrepreneurship, whether that is in housing, anything else in workforce, expanding our STEM programs. We know we need a lot of help. So the idea is that we're going to find out what the needs are. You'll be contacted to do a feasibility study. This, this company does this all over the United States. And we're going to find out what else we should be doing in this community to go raise dollars, to expand our services, to tackle more and keep this economy growing. So if you get any contacts from Convergent, they are legit. It's not a spam phone call, um, but we're going to try to up our investors and try to get more things accomplished. So overall, how you can help. One, like I said at the very beginning, contact Carl. He's in the back. Please set up a meeting. The tools are changing all the time, specifically in the state of Illinois. Like I said earlier, there are ARPA, ARPA funds available. Um, we do have someone in our office from the state of Illinois. We are always learning about the new programs before they come out. So make sure you're ahead of the game. Get a hold of Carl. Um, anyone in real estate development, please get a hold of Casey. I don't like hearing that we missed out on an opportunity because somebody had land or a building that we didn't know about because it wasn't in our system. If it's not in the system, the state doesn't have it. We can't submit it for these projects coming in. Also, uh, get a hold of Courtney if you want to be involved on a podcast or anything with a new brand. We want your testimonials. Like I said, again, we have to get rid of those terrible YouTube videos, all the content that's out there that's just sitting there right now. We need to flood it with good stories, specifically yours. Rural development-wise, um, Carl is going to be doing it for now, but hopefully this fall we'll have a new intern coming in. If you know of anyone interested in an internship, let us know. If you're interested in joining the EDC, if you're not an investor already, please get a hold of Nora, who actually, round of applause for Nora, who did lunch and set all this up. Thank you. So that's the exact reason we did this online last time, because I did not have a Nora, and I was not going to try to coordinate food and everything else. So I just turned it on and started talking. So this makes my job easy. And if you ever need a speaker or just want to talk shop, I mean, most of you already have done this, get a hold of me. We can have adult beverages, um, try to figure the rest of the stuff out. But I love talking economic development. Well, I'm very lucky to do economic development here. This is my four year anniversary, August 1st. I can't believe time has flown by. We've survived the pandemic. Things are going well. Let's keep the ball going. But thank everyone for attending.